In this lesson, I am going to discuss one-to-one -one and onto linear transformations. A function is said to be one-to-one -one if the pre-image of every element in the range consists of a single vector. So for instance, this is my t. And I get an element in the range of t. So meaning to say this is t of v for some v. This is the pre-image. T maps V to T of V, then it cannot happen that there is another V which goes to this same element. This one cannot happen because the pre-image should just be a single vector. This is the same as saying that if two elements have the same images, just like in this case, then these two pre-images should be the same. This V and V prime in our diagram must collapse. We have that one. So for example, here is a diagram of two linear transformations. For the first diagram, T here is 1 to 1. Whereas in this case, this is not 1 to 1. Because here you have two different elements in V that goes to the same element in W. Here is a characterization for a linear transformation to be one-to-one. -one. T is one-to-one -one if and only if the kernel of T consists of a single element only, and that is the zero vector in V. This is an if and only if statement, so therefore we will prove two directions. Suppose that T is one-to-one. -one. We want to show that the kernel of T must be the zero vector in V. So to do that, let us get an arbitrary element in kernel of t. We will show that this v must be the zero vector. If v is in the kernel of t, then this would mean that t of v is equal to the zero vector in w. But we also know that t maps the zero vector in v to the zero vector in w. That is a property of linear transformations. It maps the zero vector to the zero vector. So from here, t of v is equal to t of the zero vector. From our definition of one-to-one -one function, this would mean that v is equal to the zero vector. So therefore, the kernel of t consists of the zero vector only. Let us prove the other direction. Suppose that the kernel of t is equal to the zero vector only. We will show that t is 1 to 1. How do we show that t is 1 to 1? Using the definition, if we start with t of v1 equals t of v2, we want to show that v1 is equal to v2. If t of v1 is equal to t of v2, then I can put this t of v2 on the other side of the equation. And this would mean that t of v1 minus v2 is equal to the zero vector in, this is zero vector in w. This means that v1 minus v2 is mapped to the zero vector. Hence, v1 minus v2 is in the kernel of t. But the kernel of t is the zero vector. And that means that v1 must be equal to v2. So therefore, t is 1 to 1. Here is an immediate corollary of the previous theorem. The following are equivalent. t is 1 to 1 if and only if the nullity of t is equal to 0 and the rank of t is equal to the dimension of your v. From our previous theorem, t is 1 to 1 if and only if the kernel of t is just the zero vector. If the kernel of t is equal to zero vector, that is equivalent in saying that the nullity of t is equal to zero, right? These two are equivalent by the rank nullity theorem because the rank nullity theorem states that the nullity of t plus the rank of t must be equal to the dimension of v. So hence, if the nullity of t is equal to 0, 
the rank of T must be the same as the dimension of V. Here are some examples. Let us determine if the following linear transformations are one-to-one -one or not. We already encountered this example in our discussion of kernel. In our previous video lecture, the kernel of this T is just the zero matrix MN. So therefore, T is one-to-one. -one. Whereas for the other one, this is our zero transformation because it maps V to the zero vector in W. From here, the kernel of T is the entire V and therefore, it's not just the zero vector. Hence, T here is not one-to-one. -one. Let us now turn our discussion to onto functions. A function is said to be onto if every element in W has a pre-image in V. So meaning to say, if I get an arbitrary element in W, I am sure that there is a corresponding pre-image. There is an element in V that goes to this W here. In other words, T is onto when the entire set W is equal to the range of T. Recall that in general, the range or the image of T is just a subspace of W. It's possible to have elements here in W which are not images of any elements here in V. But if T is on 2, it's saying that this entire W must be the image of T. Here is a characterization for a linear transformation to be on 2. 1 is equivalent to 2 by definition. What about the equivalence of 2 and 3? From W equals the range of T. If we get the dimensions of that, the dimension of W is equal to the dimension of the range of T. What is the dimension of the range of T? By definition, that is the rank of T. So hence, the rank of T is equal to the dimension of W. Let us consider the two linear transformations, S and T. Let us determine whether they are one-to-one -one or onto. For the first one, let us check first if S is one-to-one. -one. So to answer if S is one-to-one, -one, we want to check if the kernel of S consists of the zero vector in R3. S is from R3 to R2. So this is the zero vector in R3. Let us compute for the kernel of S. The kernel of S is the set of all elements in R3 such that S of XYZ is equal to the zero vector in R2. If we want S of XYZ to be equal to zero, then this would mean that S of XYZ is x plus y, x minus y, for this to be equal to the zero vector, x and y must be equal to zero. So therefore, the kernel of S consists of all elements in R3 whose x and y coordinates are zero, but the last coordinate can be anything. So therefore, what is our conclusion? The kernel of S is not equal to the zero vector only. Therefore, the answer here is no. S is not one-to-one. -one. Number two, let us check if S is on two. To check if S is on two, we will determine whether the dimension of the codomain R2 is the same as 
the rank of x. So this is the previous theorem, the characterization of onto linear transformations. By the rank nullity theorem, the rank of s is equal to the dimension of domain R3 minus the nullity of s. Dimension of R3 is 3. What is the nullity of s here? It is the span of a single vector only, 0, 0, 1. So this is minus 1. So therefore, it's 2. So hence, the rank of S is the same as the dimension of R2, which is 2. So therefore, S is on 2. For the other linear transformation, so again, we compute for the kernel of T, set of elements in R2, which gets mapped to the zero vector in R3. P of xy, if we set that to the zero vector in R3, P of xy by definition is x plus y, x minus y, x. Set this to the zero vector, and again, we will get that. x and y are both equal to 0. So therefore, the kernel of t is just the 0 vector. 0, 0. So therefore, t is 1 to 1. Next, let us check if t is on 2. Again, we will use the characterization. Let us just check if the dimension of W, in this case R3, is it the same as the rank of T? The dimension of R3 is 3, of course. By the rank nullity theorem, the rank of T is equal to the dimension of the domain. Don't forget that minus the nullity of t. But the dimension of the domain R2 is 2. Their nullity is 0. So therefore, 3 is not equal to 2. Therefore, t is not on 2. Here's another example. Suppose that d is a differentiation map. It sends a polynomial in Pn, uh, this is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n, it maps it to its derivative. Let us compute kernel of d and show that d is on 2. Kernel of d is the set of all polynomials in Pn such that it gets mapped to the zero polynomial. What are the polynomials whose derivative is equal to 0? That will just be the constant polynomials, correct? And therefore, this is the span of the real number 1, right? D is not 1 to 1, but that is not what we want. We want to show that D is on 2. To show that D is on 2, remember that the dimension of W must be the same as the rank of your linear transformation. What is the dimension of W in this case? Our W here is Pn minus 1. What is the rank of D? By the rank nullity theorem, the rank of D is the dimension of V minus the nullity of D. The dimension of V is dimension of Pn. And the dimension of Pn is n plus 1 minus, what is the nullity of D? It is only spanned by one vector, so it's 1. So this is n. What is the dimension of Pn minus 1? That's n. Right? So therefore, D is on 2. So this example shows us that the computation of the kernel of a linear transformation 
is not just used when you are checking whether it is one-to-one. -one. You can also show that the function is onto by computing the kernel. Because if we combine the rank nullity theorem, which we used here, and this characterization, we can check whether a linear transformation is onto. Here's the nice thing about a linear transformation whose domain and codomain have the same dimension. Suppose that T is a linear transformation wherein V and W have the same dimension, then T is one-to-one -one if and only if it is on two. So meaning to say, we only have to check for one property. Recall that in general, one-to-one -one and on-to functions have nothing to do with each other, just like with our example here. T is one-to-one, -one, but T is not on-to. Whereas here, S is on-to, but S is not one-to-one. -one. Notice that your S here is a linear transformation from R3 to R2, whereas here, T is from R2 to R3. This theorem only works if the domain and codomain have the same dimension. So for example, we have this linear transformation from R3 to P2. Take note, they have the same dimension, 3. It is defined by this one. Let us determine if this is 1 to 1, on 2, or neither. Again, I will always check for the kernel of T. The kernel of T will be the elements in R3, such that it will be mapped to the zero vector in P2, and that is the zero polynomial. If T of A0, A1, A2 is mapped to the zero vector, that means that A0 plus A1x plus A2x squared is equal to the zero polynomial, which means that all of these constants must be equal to zero. So hence, this kernel over here is just the zero vector. So therefore, T is 1 to 1. And at the same time, T is already on 2. The theorem works for T because the dimension of R3 is the same as the dimension of P2. Why are we discussing 1 to 1 and on 2 functions? When a linear transformation is both 1 to 1 and on 2, it is called an isomorphism. Moreover, if V and W are vector spaces such that there exists an isomorphism from V to W, then we say that the two vector spaces are isomorphic to each other. Isomorphism essentially means that these two vector spaces are essentially the same. So let us consider this linear transformation from R3 to P2. In our previous example, we know that P is... 1 to 1 and on to, correct? So therefore, T is an isomorphism. It is an isomorphism between R3 and P2 and therefore, we say that R3 and P2 are isomorphic to each other. Iso means same. Morphic means same form. So basically, the reason why we have an isomorphism is that this linear transformation tells us how to rename. It's just we're renaming elements in R3 to P2. So an element in R3, when we view that as an element in P2, we can view it as this polynomial here. Here is our big theorem regarding isomorphism. Two finite dimensional vector spaces are isomorphic if and only if they are of the same dimension. I will not prove this. However, from now on, if we see two vector spaces that have the same dimension, there is no need to establish a linear transformation between the two. We already know that they will automatically be isomorphic. So for example, these vector spaces are isomorphic because all of these four vector spaces have dimension equal to 4.